Honestly, glass blowing is something that I had like never really considered. I'd never even like thought about doing it. Uh, one semester in my sophomore year, I tried it and I absolutely fell in love. Glass really becomes less about the finished product and, and more about experimentation and trying and, and it's just like this organic process that, that kind of happens incidentally um, and it, that's just like that just really draws me in. My name is Sergio Aguilar, I am a junior, and I am a glass major. Uh, my first plan was to go into graphic design, um, and after trying that out, I really kind of realized that it wasn't necessarily for me, uh, and at the same time, I was like really in, like, just enthralled by glass blowing, so I kind of um, chose to stray away from graphic design a little bit and, and chose to go down this path instead. The studio is called The Hot Shop. The bench is like the actual bench where you work the glass. Basically you start with a pipe about this big, you dip that pipe in the furnace and stick, the, the furnace is full of molten glass, and you just dip it in the end, get a little gather of glass, and you start working it. Once you have a manageable shape, you want to blow a bubble in there. You do it through a couple of different steps. After you blow a bubble, you want to like draw it out and get the shape of the glass, the shape of the cup. You're constantly turning the, the glass because obviously gravity is a factor and when it's molten it wants to tend to fall down and the way you fight that is just by keeping it turning and that keeps your shape pretty even. That's honestly one of the most like unforgiving parts about glass is keeping the hole turning even and keeping your shape the way you want it to be. The way you start making a cup is you have to block it with a wooden block that's constantly in water so that it, the, the temperature of the glass doesn't burn the wood and that gives it like a nice controllable shape Throughout this whole process, you're kind of fighting the glass as it cools. And you want to work the glass when it's really hot, and the glass naturally wants to cool. So it gets to a point where you can't work it, and you have to be sticking it back into heat to regulate the temperature. People like to ask, oh, how long did that take you? Really nothing will ever take you more than four or five minutes at the most. It's not slow, but like you only have so much time to work on the glass because of what I mentioned earlier, where you're fighting the temperature of the glass. So as it's cooling, it's going to get to a point where you just can't get it back up to its original temperature. So you really have to make sure that your glass is worked, that you're satisfied with it before it cools. So it's a very fast process. The studio lends itself to a very social atmosphere, and I was just like really drawn into that. It really resonated with me as a person, I guess. It's really something you can't really do by yourself. You always need a partner because you can't work the glass and have air blowing through the pipe at the same time. So you need somebody to be there for you and you kind of take turns and it becomes like also a leadership thing. When you're in control of, of the pipe or, or as they, they'd call it, the gaffer, you really have to make sure that you can lead people that are working with you to get what, it, what you want out of the glass. It's one of the biggest draws for me. See, with the pendants, come from a different process. The glass I mentioned, like a cup like this, would be worked in the pipe. Something like this, I would work in a kiln and it's basically like a tiny little oven that comes up to pretty high temperatures. The advantage to making these pendants is that out of one kiln I can get 30 pendants. It's a very efficient process. I'm pretty proud of this cup. It's like one of the nicer cups I've made, if I'm being honest. They're so mundane, but once you're blowing glass, they're your main way to practice. If you need to practice glass blowing, you sit down and make a bunch of cups. Glass is just like such a different way of working with anything that you, you can't start being good at it, right? So it's just like a, a nice little like progression of watching yourself get better and you really feel gratified by having that nice cup that you're kind of satisfied with. And, and you know, it's not perfect, but I it's like one step closer, if that makes sense. A lot of glass is just experimentation. I think it's a very intimate process. Like you really get familiar with the glass and that's just the fun of it. It's like very spontaneous and that just really resonates with my personality. Along with that, the social aspect, again, just really appeals to me as a person. So yeah, that, I would say that that's my biggest appeal to glass. Well, I mean, I like glass blowing because it's such a unique material. I consider it to be almost like fourth dimensional sculpture, where like on top of everything else, you have to factor in time. Uh, depending on like, if it gets too cold, then it cracks. If it gets too hot, then it falls apart and blows on itself. It's um, 
It's really cool stuff. I don't know. I feel like it doesn't matter who you are. If you come into the hot shop, you're automatically going to be amazed about like what it can do and like how someone can shape it. Because it's like no other material out there. And so, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I encourage everyone that gets the chance to try it, to try it. If you even run into that opportunity, to take it. Because it's such a unique, different thing than from anything you'll ever touch. And, like, I can't stress that enough, really. So yeah, I think a lot of people can and should try it. Like, particularly here at Temple University, they actually offer classes for non-art students. And it's just like, to give people a little bit of a taste in what it looks like, and what the process looks like, and, and what the studio is. That studio that we have here is absolutely a privilege, and I think everybody should get a chance to step in there and at least see what's going on. And maybe it's not for you, but like, you wouldn't know unless you tried it. I think, in general, wh whatever you want to call art, wh whether it's uh, actual visual art, but it goes so much further than that. I mean, it goes into music, literature, even culinary arts. I think they're all just like a form of human expression that we all kind of have in, in one way or another, and it's just one of the many manifestations of it. And I just think it doesn't get enough legitimacy in my opinion. It's just kind of like, oh, it's something fun that people do sometimes. So I think with that, art kind of gets taken less seriously than it could because jobs are not as clear cut. A lot of times you're working for yourself and, and it's a lot of self-fulfillment that you're after. So it's not very, it's not the most gratifying thing in the world. At the same time, I think there's a lot of people that appreciate it on the surface and, and they're like oh that looks pretty and they don't necessarily understand why it does or, or why they like it uh, so I think it, it all comes down to just like being I guess educated about the arts and, and, and like being appreciative of it and, and I think more people could and should be more appreciative